Messages of condolences continue to pour in following the death of Prince Mangosutu Butelezi, founder of the IFP and traditional prime minister to the Zulu monarch. We speak to those who've had a chance to work closely with the man and one of those people is Dr. Zwilliam Kize, who joins me now via Zoom. Thank you so much for your time, Dr. Mkize. We do appreciate it. Uh, I can imagine uh, the devastation that many are feeling at the moment, especially the Amazulu nation. Sorry, Mr. Um, Dr. Mkiza, you've muted yourself. If you could just unmute yourself. My apologies. Thank you. Um, may, I start, may I start by conveying our deepest condolences to the Butelezi family, uh, mainly his children and his uh, immediate family, as well as the Butelezi clan of which he was the leader. I want to also want to convey the condolences to the uh, King Isilo Samabanda and the Zulu nation for the work that uh, uh, Mdwana had uh, performed over many years uh, trying to uh, work together to hold the uh, Amazulu people together. And I also say on behalf of us who work with uh, Mdwana as uh, members of the different parties, we do convey uh, those condolences we we'll remember him uh, as a leader that has uh, served our people over many years, and uh, he has got huge amounts of uh, accomplishments on his side. And of course, there have been difficult times, which I have heard some of the members talking about. I think uh, the most important thing uh, for us has been the fact that uh, at the end of all the turmoil, the tensions, and, and all the challenges we face, uh, Prince Butelezi was also in the forefront of trying to bring the reconciliation and peace and to end the violence in the provinces of Wazul Natal, particularly in Gauteng. But we'll also remember uh, Prince for the work he's done serving uh, in, in the um, uh, traditional capacity. He has actually championed the cause of the uh, different uh, traditional leaders uh, looking at the issues of their roles and their functions, looking at the issues of uh, uh, heritage and culture. And for that, we have in Gwazul Natal seen him play a very significant role. The Zulu monarch had played a huge role in the preservation of unity and peace and the end of violence. And of course, uh, Mdwana had played a role in that regard. But if you look back at the legacy of uh, his administration, uh, no doubt we had always disagreed about the role uh, of the homeland government. Uh, and of course, uh, we disagreed mainly from the African National Congress side. But uh, Udana did um, do a lot of work in helping to build schools, uh, to yeah. uh, focus on uh, economic development, building up local economic uh, uh, centers for factories and um, areas to create employment. So there actually has been a huge contribution in that regard, including creation of a, a, a financial institution, which is now called ITALA, which was uh, making uh, access easier to uh, financial support for the people in the area. So insofar as uh, the role he had played in the earlier days, I think it is fair to say that there's been a huge contribution, a number of schools and a focus on education and self-help uh, programs that has been a very important contribution that he had made over that period. Mm. But we all know that um, uh, Mdwana used to be a man of uh, very uh, strong principles. So sometimes you disagree with his principles, but you also respect the extent to which you would be prepared to stand to fight for those particular principles. Uh, in this case, you recall that uh, there was a huge disagreement about the voting and uh, he actually took a chance of not uh, going on to election for his party, which could have annihilated him. But of course, uh, in the process, we ended up with the matter being resolved. So we re remember all those about him. Uh, of the latter days, uh, he served the new democratic government as part of the government of national unity, working with President Mandela and President uh, uh, Mbegi, and we also recall his contribution to the calendars of South Africa when he brought up the issues of um, Heritage Day, uh, which was taken 
uh, translated from uh, what was Guazulu uh, Shaga Day, which was now appropriately named Heritage Day. And I think that some of those roles that he played will always uh, be remembered. But otherwise, as a, at the personal level, um, we'll remember him as a father, father figure, a statesman who in parliament would raise uh, issues uh, and uh, you know, would also be a voice of reason when there was a lot of uh, disagreements and turmoil and uh, you know, confrontations and would come everybody. But I think for me has been most important is that he has said the ordinary people, rural people, yeah. and he lived amongst them, he, he lived among them, and all of that, for me, has been a major, uh, you know, a lesson for the kind of leadership that he had actually endeavored to provide over the many years. Sure. I want to speak about the significant role that he played traditionally and how the royal family now needs to navigate uh, the fact that they have now lost their prime minister. But I, I want to move to something that you said about how uh, Prince Mangosutu Butelezi strive to bring about peace, especially in Gauteng. Does that mean, Dr. Mkhize, that you disagree with um, the, the issue around the massacres and how many say, uh, many living that reality even till today, that he was central to those massacres that happened, especially in Gauteng, and that he never acknowledged what actually happened? And given what was uh, confessed in the, in the TRC, that IFP members indicated that they were instructed to, you know, perform these massacres in Gauteng. Do you disagree or agree that, you know, he maybe should have acknowledged or spoken in depth about the accusation that he was central to those massacres? Well, firstly, <clears throat> let me say that it was a very difficult time for all of South Africa. And, of course, we're all very sad about that period in history. And we're certain with the fact that there are so many lives that were lost over that period. The political uh, turmoil, the hand of the third force and the apartheid government in the whole work uh, of, uh, of the massacres was actually well acknowledged. And I must say that uh, all of us have to look back and say, uh, did we do enough? Did he say enough? Did he acknowledge enough? Did others you know, all at, uh, you know, uh, own up to what had happened? I think that, that we leave that for history because um, there's been a, a lot of things said during that period. All I can say at this point is that we as South Africans are happy to have gotten out of that uh, glitch, uh, but also it's important for us to say that uh, we needed to move to a point where <clears throat> we're to face each other and look at, <clears throat> excuse me, and look at how we can reconcile our people irrespective of where the fault might have laid. And we had a lot of um, activities where we had 10 aside committees between ANC and IFP, five aside, three aside. All of these made a huge impact in uh, reconciling our people. We had teams that were to go out and, uh, you know, come down leaders who were actually very belligerent, who were, uh, you know, using caustic language that ignited tensions in the villages and, co and, and communities. Now, Mdwana did not obstruct that process. He was part of that. We used to go and report to Mdwana and Madiba whenever we had sat down <clears throat> and looked for solutions for Wazulu Natal. Because we went through all of that process, we do acknowledge the fact that uh, if Mdwana had not been uh, positive about peace, we obviously would have had a problem. But the fact that ultimately between uh, President uh, Madiba as well as Mdwana, we used to go to them as principals and then say this, uh, this is how far, <clears throat> how far we have gone as uh, the, for the problems of Kwasun Natal. At some point, we had to actually ask, plea for, plead for a special arrangement where we were to postpone the elections in Kwasun Natal so that the parties can find each other, abolish no go zones. We went through all of that because there was an, a, a willingness uh, to lead us into you know, a peaceful, uh, you know, era of uh, no violence and no co uh, abolishing, yeah. no co zones. So I would say that all in all, uh, we have had a difficult time, but we have been able to emerge out of that and calm down uh, the situation which have really got 
uh, much, uh, very much out of control. Have you not uh, all been cooperating in that regard? Sure. And just lastly, um, Dr. Mkize, yeah. uh, looking at the role and the significant role that he played, um, especially in keeping to traditions <coughs> and cultural norms, being the Prime Minister um, of, of um, the Royal Household, you have a situation now where there seems to be some sort of drift or divide between uh, between the two, um, what do you think is going to happen moving mm -hmm. forward, given um, that, you know, you've lost this anchor of a, of, of a prince and a prime minister, which is Mango Soto Gutelezi? Well, certainly, uh, Umdwana had a, a, a strong role because he, he not only knew uh, some of the traditions uh, in the royal house and in the, amongst the Zulu people, but he also was part of those. So, he would double up as kind of expert to say this is what used to be done as a reference point because he had been serving for over 70 years. Of course, uh, in the issues of succession, there will always be <clears throat> controversies. And when there are such controversies, then people who exist at the time have to find a way to resolve them. I think that is going to create a huge void in, with regard to the issue of uh, you know, the traditional leadership in particular the um, uh, Ingonya, Ingonyama and around the issues of how uh, to hold uh, everyone together to try and trace the, take the processes forward. But I would still hope that uh, there are many enough people who will take uh, from this experience, this rich heritage that uh, you know, they have left behind to try and pull together uh, all the people and resolve whatever issues that arise. I think what we should have over the years learned a lot from his experience and from lessons of his knowledge. And therefore, to be able to say, uh, at some point we would have understood that he would be, he depart this world. And so those who remain behind must take responsibility to take the matters forward. I have a lot of hope and uh, uh, faith that those issues that were left outstanding and issues that require resolution, uh, there will be people who will rise up to the occasion to actually help to steer those issues. Uh, Prince Mutelezi was brought into the issue of tradition when he was very young, and I, th I think he led over the period that it actually is a matter of commitment, those who can actually stand up and work together with the royal house to try and resolve the issues that are outstanding. It's not new that you have controversies, you have uh, disputes. Uh, <clears throat> almost each and every one of the kings, if you go back into the history, there was some dispute uh, at the uh, installation but that had to be worked on and be dealt with because it ultimately comes out, comes down to the consensus of what we believe is the right way to deal with it. And I believe that uh, that should be dealt with. I think for us, what is important is to take lessons from the legacy of Mdwana, who on, on the one side was a very strong leader, uh, very principled, but on the other side, he was also a human being that could be very pleasant to, to work with a responsible, um, you know, leader, particularly during the difficult days uh, in in the in the um, in parliament, he would also rise up to the occasion. So I think we must focus on the good that he would have left behind. Uh, there's a whole lot of difficulties that we have come from in the past that are a lot of which may not have been completely closed. But as South Africans, we do need to hold to each other at this point and move on and make sure that the gap of his departure is covered by those who remain so that uh, we can move on and uh, bring together our people and make sure that we keep unity of our people and continue towards uh, socioeconomic uh, development of all our people to deal with all the challenges of poverty, of inequality, of unemployment, and all the problems that we face. We need to hold each other and move on uh, as a result and not falter by saying, well, Mdwana is gone, therefore things are going to fall apart. I think we must be positive and work together. Just lastly, um, Dr. Mkizi, I'm curious to know what lessons you took from um, Mangosutu Butelezi as a leader. Um, you know, he was uh, also a political um, figure that, you know, really tried to make a difference in many instances. Um, but, you know, wh wh what did you learn from him? Also <coughs> being the premier of KwaZulu-Natal, you know, Mangosutu Butelezi was very vocal about the state of this country, about the state of affairs, about what was happening on a governance level. What did you learn from him ha as a leader, especially with his outrage about the state of our country? 
Well, firstly, I think uh, the issue of being uh, straightforward and forthright, if there are issues uh, that need to be raised, uh, not fear to uh, raise issues directly, even if they're uncomfortable. I think it's a very good lesson. And secondly, the issue of, uh, uh, you know, always remembering we are leaders because we're serving our people. Uh, 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 Prince Mutelezi never left um, the Mashabatini area. His house is still there. He's grown up in the same area. He still lives with the same people. That, for me, was important for him to stay in touch with all the people, uh, you know, so that he does not just learn about the problems of the ordinary rural people. He lives through it. He can see it, and he can always think about what is it that needs to be done to deal with the people. I think leaders need to learn to stay in touch with the people who have elected them. And, of course, uh, perseverance. You know, I think uh, over the years you would have seen that... Uh, the performance of the IFP has been uh, up and down, and there were times when it was really gone very much down, and he continued and persevered. And in the process, it's actually seen some improvement that are happening. That I think, uh, you know, what you learn out of that is that it's not going to be ever easy for everybody, but we must persevere and move on. And if you, if you believe in certain principles, it sometimes becomes important to stay up there and, and, and uh, stand firm on those principles, uh, even if you disagree with, because there will always be disagreement in a number of areas. But at the end, you need to understand that uh, disagreeing with uh, those principles does not mean that the person is necessarily wrong. It also means that uh, you, know, you have to face it even if you become unpopular. So I think that those are some of the lessons that we have learned. But over the period, I think uh, it's important for us to say we need to move on. We have gone through very difficult times, but everybody needs to make a contribution to try and build a much safer South Africa, a much more peaceful South Africa, a much more tolerant a politically, uh, you know, a, a, a community that's much more politically tolerant, so that we can create, have the um, the uh, our children inherit a country which is more orderly, even if there are still challenges. But we must say we have made our contributions whilst we lead. Okay, thank you so much for your insights uh, this evening. We do appreciate your time. That was the former Premier of KwaZulu-Natal and the former Health Minister, Dr. Zweli Mkhize.